All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And today we're gonna to be going over the CNC setup that I have here in the shack. <clears throat> now, I know a lot of you guys already have your own CNCs. Maybe you have bigger, maybe you have smaller. But today, I'm just gonna show you the setup that I'm running with the same Smart 6050. I do have a larger machine ordered and it'll be here soon. And I plan to upgrade. And that's why I've built the table out like this. But a lot of folks are asking about, you know, dust extraction, uh, how I'm operating it, the computer setup, and all those type of things. And I'm, I'm slowly evolving into what I hope to be the end result once my larger machine gets here. But I just want to kind of walk you through the setup, show you how to make everything automated and automatic, and uh, maybe throw a few parts at you that you've been looking for, and uh, just show you how it works. So if that's something you're into, stick around. We'll be right back. All right, so I've had the machine for a few months now, uh, at least a couple, <laughs> and I have ran it a lot. Uh, the spool board that's on there, I actually, until I got the training wheels off of it, uh, I used a piece of plywood as a spool board just to make sure I didn't get any of the metal components of this uh, uh, kind of hybrid bed that it has on there, uh, and just basically screwed everything down. So uh, it's, it's been doing me a pretty good job. I've got the Makita router, as you'll see, I've got it on there, and I've had to do a little bit of an engineering to the dust collection. The one that I had was the Jinmitsu one that I bought for the uh, 4040 Pro, and then when I got this machine, it didn't quite fit the way it needed to. Running it with the overhead collection rather than running it with a shop vac created some issues, but thanks to a little creative work in Fusion 360 and a uh, little bit of 3D printing, I got that put together and it's working great. Uh, I did some other videos showing you kind of where, how the dust extraction works and how well it works. And I'll try to put a little clip of video up here so you can kind of see it in action. And it's, it's doing a really good job. The machine cuts three quarter inch plywood faster than I thought was possible because I came from the world of the Jinmitsu 4040 as well as the 3030. And this was the first, I would say, big boy CNC that I got. And I know this is small compared to a lot of them, but it is bulky, it is strong. The machine itself weighs probably close to 200 pounds. It's not something that is you're gonna to be toting around. So with that said, and I'm gonna peek you over here a little bit. As you can see, the table that it's sitting on, uh, this is a 64 by 64 inch table. Uh, I specifically built this table for CNC and, and I've got a few upgrades and things that I've done to it as well. So we're gonna start and just so you know guys, there's one of my latest projects. Uh, if you watch the channel, you may have saw me do this. This was a CNC, I got sawdust all over it. This was a CNC project that I went back in the P2 and after I CNC'd it, I went back and I engraved in the recesses. Pretty cool project, you gotta admit. But I did cut this out on the Jinmitsu 6050. Uh, just to give you an idea, if you don't have a CNC, the kind of project sticks you can do. And that's, there again, you know, I'm not really showing it off. It's just, you know, okay, yeah, I am. All right, guys, so one of the biggest things that I like about CNCs, and just to give you an idea, it's not small, okay? It, it's not a tiny machine. You can look here and see the, uh, the size of the Makita as compared to the machine. Uh, I am six foot tall and this machine is uh, it's a pretty good size. So it's nothing to sneeze at. It is a definitely an upgrade from either the 4040 or the uh, 3030 if you've got it. Uh, this one does have, autom the, the router automatically comes on the way I've got it configured. The dust collection automatically comes on and it works great. Now, it does still have a little bit of dust. So if you're wanting zero dust, I don't know that CNC is what you need. Uh, I haven't found a way to configure one yet that you don't have any dust, but this does keep it to a minimum. Uh, the dust is piped out through this hose on my little arm that I have constructed here. It goes over and goes into the bag on the uh, wind uh, dust collection system. But as you can see with the table, I've got my little cleanup vacuum hose. I made me some brackets to mount it here. And guys, that's part of what CNC is about, is you can make most anything you need. Of course, I got my website across the front of the table here on a little clack shack sign. That was actually the first design that I did with this machine when I was testing it out. Built myself a little pocket for the probe. Uh, this machine does come with a Z-axis probe, which is really handy. 
Uh, and if you have one of these guys, a real easy cheat, just get you a rare earth magnet and clip it in the clip and you got yourself a magnetic Z probe. So you don't have to worry about trying to get that thing to bite on there and grip. Uh, also, you'll notice right here, I've got me a little tray set up. This is where the, uh, the computer is controlled from. You'll notice the TV on the wall back there. That is hooked to my little small Dell PC. I got me a little refurbished Dell computer off of uh, Amazon to use to run this. I was using a laptop, but with the new machine that I've got coming, it is gonna take up this entire table. There's not gonna be room on the table for a PC or for anything else. Uh, so I've got this uh, neat little uh, keyboard and I made me a little keyboard holder here and I can actually operate the machine from here. So this is gonna be my workstation here uh, to be able to work the big four foot by four foot machine. Also, because you guys like to see video of CNC's working and that's where I've been capturing a lot of my, my video. I've got me an arm here that I've made and this, this arm guys, I'm gonna move you around, so bear with me. I've got an arm here that I have made and this is my own little design and that's why I love, love CNC's. I basically have made this little set of parts that you can put together and create pretty much any kind of bracket or brace that I need. Uh, it's incorporated into this shelf. Uh, the arm of the shelf basically extends out and I've got adjustable arm here that I can use to place the camera. I did the same setup, the same actual uh, file I used to build that arm to support the dust collection hose over there to keep it from being in the way and flopping around. Uh, it is adjustable, it has wing nuts on there. I can loosen those wing nuts up and rotate that arm and adjust it however I need. It's kind of like adult Legos. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool the way that you can put things together. Uh, but that way it allows me to have the camera mounted to the wall instead of having it on the table because if I mount the camera, I mounted the camera to the table for a little while and you, it would pick up a little bit of uh, every now and then when the machine did an abrupt move, it would cause the camera to move a little bit. So I've mounted it to the wall to try to eliminate that. So unless the CNC starts shaking the whole building, hopefully that will not be a problem. Uh, but you can see with the Jinmitsu, you get this little controller box right here. Uh, because I'm running a relay and I'm not running the spindle, I don't use the knob on the front to adjust the speed. What I have is a relay set up here in the back. And we'll kind of walk you around and show you what that looks like. Right here inside this little box is actually where the spindle gets turned on. And the way that this is wired up is the black and red wires that used to power the spindle now go inside this box to a relay that activates the router. It just so happens I have one that went bad on me, so I can kind of show you what it looks like. But inside that box, guys, there's one of these here. It is just a DC to AC relay with a cooling fin on the bottom of it. And some of the research I did said that these things are terrible to go bad uh, if they get too hot. And so I bought the one with a heat sink. This one worked really well. But when I got a 6050, one thing that I did find is because of the variable speed knob here, do not run this with the knob all the way up. Uh, once, once I killed this, once I fried this, I went back with my voltage meter and did some testing and I have found this location and I don't know if you can see that, but I marked it with a Sharpie. It, that line straight up and down is enough voltage to operate this relay, keep it held without getting it too hot uh, because I had the voltage turned all the way up. It was pumping too much uh, voltage through here. The more voltage, the hotter it got, the hotter it got, it died. And so now it's basically used for content and just to show people what it looks like so I don't have to crack my little electrical box open. Uh, the way that I went about that, you can see coming out of the electrical box right here, basically I went and bought a six foot heavy duty extension cord and I cut it right here and wired it into the relay uh, using wire nuts and just your, your typical household wiring stuff. Uh, and then the relay, when it engages uh, the relay here, energizes this wire going to the router, which causes the router to come on. When the router turns off, this loses current, relay disengages, router goes off. On the other end of the cable that comes out of here, I'm running a shop vac uh, relay that you can buy on Amazon that is made for chip extraction uh, vacuums or whatever to uh, help pick up sawdust. That thing is just plug and go. You plug the plug it into the wall, you plug your tool into one outlet, and then you plug your dust collection into the other outlet, and it does the same thing that this does, only with the 120, it's automatic, it's store-bought, no electrical uh, work or skills needed to install that one. 
So that makes it really simple. So we're gonna move you over here a little bit where you can see the, see what I'm doing. And I'll just kind of demonstrate to you. So I've got the machine set up right now. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and load a job, but I'm going to basically engrave air here. Uh, I'm not going to be cutting anything at this moment. I've got some video of it cutting that I'll be more than happy to uh, add to the video here. But what I want to do now is just show you the automation and how everything comes on and how it goes off on its own. So I'm going to walk the machine back this way just a little bit to stay out of the limit switches and uh, not cause a big issue here. Uh, the one thing that I will say when you get one of these machines, if you get the 6050 uh, and you're using candle, make sure you set the Z probe process correctly because I had a problem with that and that's why my spool board got a little chewed up in the beginning. Uh, but now that I've got that dialed in, it works much better. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lower the bit down, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna set the Z, but I'm just gonna go ahead right there and I'm gonna set the zero on the Z axis as well as the X and Y. That way it thinks we're ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit, the, hit send the job and you'll hear the router spin up and then you'll hear the dust collection cut on. Let it run for a couple of seconds and I'm gonna shut it down. All right, so as you can tell, the uh, dust collection did run for a few seconds after the spindle cuts off. And the reason it does that is basically just to make sure that when the machine powers down, it's had opportunity to, just set, to pull any kind of chips or anything that's up here. Go ahead and pull them over there before it powers down. Uh, and you'll notice a lot of times, even after the spindle cuts off and, and the machine cuts down for the uh, chip extraction, it'll still have enough vacuum as it gears down that it'll be pulling sawdust in down here. So that's that's pretty neat. Uh, I'm, I'm liking the keyboard approach. I know a lot of guys have controllers and the you know joysticks or whatever, but I like having the keyboard here because I can do anything I want to on the computer. Uh, this, compu key this keyboard is wireless, cordless, so I can walk around the shop, take it where I want to. I can actually take it over there and do it from there. I also have the computer that I use to run this set up on my network with a shared drive. I do my designing over there, I send it to this machine and deploy the, uh, the, the cuts and stuff from this machine. Uh, but I'm doing that because I have a shared drive, shared space on this machine and I can save from over there. I also have the capability if I wanna, if I've got everything ready to go and let's say I'm just waiting to, to run a, a job, I can actually use the remote desktop utility in Windows to access this machine and and move the machine, do what I need to from over there as well. And I can also do it from the phone. So it's pretty versatile once you get all this uh, set up and get everything going. But like I said, when I get my new machine, this table is gonna be completely filled up with stuff. So I have to keep all 64 by 64. Actually, I think I made this thing 66 because this little faint line right here is where the edge of the Shape of Co. 5 Pro should reach as long as the specifications I've read are correct. But that's the setup that I've got going on, guys. It's nothing too fancy, nothing too special. I haven't painted the table or anything yet. I was just gonna leave it alone for now. I think we got enough orange in the shop for the moment. But, uh, but I'll drop description, I'll drop links in the description to the relays and the parts that I'm using for this. A lot of people had just reached out to me saying that they have the 30-30 or they have the 40-40 and they wanna get this type of a setup to where everything's automatic because when you're using the offline controller or if you're using candle or whatever to operate the machine, this keeps you from having to reach up and turn on the router, uh, walk over and turn on dust collection. It makes everything pretty much automatic just like it is with the more expensive machines. And it's not that much of an upgrade as far as just to buy this relay and the one for the shop vac. So I hope this is something that you're interested in and I hope you liked it. If uh, you're one of the folks that was asking me about it, uh, let me know what you think about the setup. And uh, that's going to be it for tonight, guys. So until next time, be safe and have a good day.